Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's card making video, I am playing with the Slimline Snow Globe die set from Scrappy Tales. This is part two. Last time I showed you how to make a spinner using the Nutcracker insert for this die. Today I'm showing you how to make a shaker card with the Snowman insert. So this is the Slimline Snow Globe die set. There is actually two parts, but it comes all together. I'm going to show you how to use that, how to die cut it, how to put it together with this cute die cut snowman on the inside. I'll also be using this holiday essentials die set. I'm going to have all of these things linked for you below so you can check those out. Now, when I die cut this, I am die cutting it on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. It fits end to end on that panel. I have the cut line at the bottom of this die butted up against the bottom of the paper. Now I am carefully taping this insert that cuts out this large oblong rounded rectangle so that I can use it again to cut three in total of these pieces for today's card. So I am just trimming off the paper. I've die cut that. Now when I remove it, I'm just being really careful to remove the paper from the die. So those dies stay together and I can die cut this two more times. And I have just enough paper to go ahead and do that two more times. So three of these will fit on an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. I am just trimming it down and getting close to the die as I can. So yeah, I can use this one more time. It's perfect. I'm using three of these with the window cut out because I was hoping to make my snowman a spinner. So I'm doing all of this with those in, with that thought in mind. I have these extra pieces on the inside you could save for something else. I like to use them to die cut my other pieces if I'm not going to use them in my card. And the pieces I'm doing right here, the largest one is the side accordion piece and the smaller one is the top accordion piece. And that larger one shown here is the bottom accordion piece. And I will show you how to put those together. All right, first I want to splatter and add some snow to my snow globe. So it looks like the the snow is on the outside and the inside of the globe and I'm doing that with some white acrylic paint which is one of my favorite things to splatter for snow and I love how it looks on the red I love it so much so we're going to be able to set those aside to dry while we fold the accordion pieces so this is the smallest one I'm folding it in a peak valley fold so forward and back and it makes an accordion type shape now these ones here are very thin and so what I like to do is fold it in half and then fold the sides up. And I'm using my crease tool to make sure I get a really crisp crease on these. And you wanna make sure that they're even also, or it, your mechanism is not gonna work very well as far as folding your card flat. Okay, so now we need to put two of these accordion pieces together to create the side accordion piece. I, I need it a little bit thicker for today's card. So on one of the pieces, I have adhesive on the outer flap and the inner flap on the ends. On the second piece, I only have it on one of the outer flaps. So I can hook it together in the middle and create one larger piece. And I repeated that with the last two pieces for the side of the card. Now we're moving on to the accordion for the bottom of the card. And we're going to do the same thing, folding this peak valley, peak valley. You just wanna really make sure that you crease this well and that you're folding on those score lines. If you get it a little bit off, your card doesn't close and fold down as well as it could. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so there's the bottom accordion piece. We have all of our accordion pieces done now. And so we're gonna move on to putting our snowman together. These are all the die cut pieces for the snowman. I'm going to paper piece him together. So I thought you'd like to see how he goes together. I have die cut that hat just using the base or that, that intricate solid snowman not the one that has no lines in it, but the other one to die cut his hat. And then I just snipped away the part I didn't want. Now for the holly, I'm also snipping some little pieces apart so I can have it multiple colors, but you know, you can do this however you want. That's what's fun about it is you get to create your own snowman, playing with different colors, making it traditional, making it a little bit fun. I went with a 
dark red and a dark green and pink and a light teal color and I thought it was just a really fun color combination to build with. So now once the hat's done I can stick that right onto this white piece and this one is kind of a guide to show you where to stick all your things. There's also a solid snowman I die cut from black then I don't have to paper piece in the eyeballs if I don't want to but there is a die to die cut out the eyeballs for him. Also I am putting my red twine in between between those two layers so I have something to thread my snowman through in the top of the snow globe card because he can either dangle or he can be a spinner so we'll talk about that as we move on now for the scarf here I die cut out the top layer but I didn't want the open pieces to be black as it would be if I glued it right down to the white piece. So I stuck it to a scrap of red cardstock and then I'm just gonna trim around it. So now I have a pink and red scarf and I love that. But there's lots of different options that you could do for this scarf and I like that. Um, having the different colored stripes behind it is really fun. So once that's cut out, I'll just glue it right on top of the scarf that's there and then you won't be able to see the black showing through at all. And there it goes. So cute. That scarf really just brings him to life, as does the hat. And you could leave it like that. You wouldn't have to glue on all the things. You could also use some Copic markers to add color. That would be really cute too. I'm adding the buttons in. They are from that dark green cardstock. And now I can just add the glue right to the black piece that I glued behind the snowman to glue on my buttons. Next are the arms. Well, you can see I already added that candy cane. Somehow I didn't record that part but I die cut the candy cane from white and then added the red with a red Copic marker because there's little cut lines in the candy cane that show you the segments for it so it was really super easy to color and very fast so now I have the mittens and there's even a die for the top of the mitten so you can make them multicolored so darling. So there's my little snowman with his carrot nose and all his colorful accessories. Now when I was done with this, I decided he needed a little highlighting, a little accents. So I gave him a pink cheek, and then I'm using this BG10 marker, I believe, to add some little bits of shading and coloring around the edges. And I really love how this looked and really just helped bring him to life. So there's my little snowman. He's so cute. I also thought let's add some highlights with a white gel pen. So I did that and then I was able to put a little freckle on his cheek and some highlights to his eyes, which is the part I really wanted, but I went ahead and added more white highlights here and there to just add some more texture, another element of dimension, and he's just cute. A really cute dice. I love it. All right, so that finishes up the snowman. Let's get a close-up look at him so you can see all the detail. It's a um, less intricate die than the Nutcracker that I showed last time, but equally as cute. All right, I have some window sheets that will fit behind here. I believe they are about three and a fourth inches or three and three eighths by six and three eighths, I believe is the size I used behind these windows. So I have two of these panels here that I'm going to add the window sheet to the back of. I did snip off the corners of the window sheet so that it wouldn't show um, through to the front. You know, you don't want the window sheet showing when you do a shaker. So I added some double-sided adhesive around the frame, and then I also used liquid glue. I really want to make sure these stick down really well, so that's why I used both. I repeated that on the second piece, and we're going to sandwich these together to create our shaker panel for the front of this card. So I'm using some foam tape. This is from Heffy Doodle, and it's thick and it is not sticky on the edges, which I love. And it comes in a wider size as well, but this is the perfect size to fit around this slimline snow globe. I added a little anti-static powder. And then for my shaker, I'm using these micro beads. I got them a very long time ago. I mean, years and years and years, <laughs> these micro beads, and then some seed beads on top of that for my shaker element. I also added a little bit of extra foam around those um, open areas so that my card will be sturdy. I won't have a piece that kind of caves in, so to speak. Once that was done, I pulled off the backing of all the foam tape and then very slowly, very carefully, I sandwiched the two together and that creates my shaker. 
So this is the front of my card is going to have a shaker on it. All right, so that is looking cool. Now let's talk about options. You can have this snowman dangle on the inside of your card and the back of the card be solid, just like that. The other option is that you could have your snowman be a spinner. But what I found out through making this video is that two things. This snowman is not completely symmetrical. So if you want to add one to the back, it doesn't line up perfectly, but really close. So it's okay if you wanted to glue another one on the back, you can barely tell that it doesn't line up in a very small couple of spots. Or if you want it to spin, you could also use this smaller die and have the snowman be on like a piece of patterned paper and put another one on the back. But here's what I found out. When you have the front of this enclosed because it's a shaker, it's not actually going to be able to spin because it's gonna hit the window of the shaker. You really need both sides to be open to create a spinner, which is what I did in my previous video with the Nutcracker. If you haven't seen that, it's linked for you in the description box below so you can check out the Nutcracker video. I went ahead and decided to make this be a spinner. I thought a shaker plus a spinner, like it's so awesome to have both. But you're gonna see, I, I do have to modify it because it just doesn't actually spin. So mine's going to dangle and it's gonna have an open back, kind of. We'll get there. But let's put this together. So I am adding the shaker portion, the front, to my accordion piece that is for the bottom of the card. And I added it right behind that largest one inch flap. That's a place where you can add your sentiment. It looks like kind of a base for the snow globe. Then on the back, we're gonna add adhesive to the very last flap, and that's where you stick the back of the card. Now for the front, we're using this smaller accordion piece. We want it to look like an M when we stick it in here, and you're gonna line it up with the notch at the top of the snow globe. I just squeeze and hold that in place while I add the adhesive on the next one, and you can see there's a hole in the center of this, and that's where you're gonna string your extra add-on, in this case, the snowman. So I'm going to string that thread through there. I chose red because it matched, and then you can tie it off in a knot, and it becomes a spinner. But like I said, mine isn't actually going to spin. Now I wanted to try something. I brought in this little bead, it's called a perler bead. At least that's um, one of the names for it. I think there's some other names for it as well. But I thought maybe that would help me be able to um, just have something to block that hole because I found when I'm trying to tie multiple knots so the knot doesn't go through that hole, I am making my spinner or my dangling piece a little too long or a little too short. So I thought having this bead would be really helpful. And it really was. Now it's not gonna work great if you're trying to do a spinner, but if you're dangling it, I really liked it for that. However, mine did end up falling off and I had to um, reattach it but that was okay because I actually glued my snowman or when my snowman was dangling, it had the um, the side I wanted to be the back was facing the front. So I was able to fix that. But um, yeah, the bead, it's a nice concept to try if you're doing this as a dangling piece versus a spinning piece. All right, now it's time to add those side accordion pieces, which I remember glued two together to make it a little bit wider, and you're just gonna glue them on the sides. This is gonna ensure that this card is stable and it's gonna help it to be able to stand up. So I am adding both of those, but when I realized this didn't spin around, I decided I would put a window sheet um, to cover that back open panel of the card so he'd be really encased like it was an actual snow globe. And you can see him from the front and the back. Even if he doesn't spin, he dangles. And I don't know if you noticed, but when I created my second snowman, I gave him a different color scarf. So the back one has a pink scarf, um, but that's the one I wanted in the front. That's the one I originally created. This one has a red scarf. So I thought it'd be fun just to switch around a few of their details. 
All right, so I added the sentiment you saw there and some snowflakes, and now I am bringing in another stamp set. I have used this stamp set before from Scrappy Tales to create a Christmas bingo set. I'm gonna have that linked for you below too. That was a super cool project to make, and I thought it'd be really cute to have the mittens hanging from the top of this card, as well as a bow. I pulled out this pink satin ribbon from my stash, and I'm going to tie that into a beautiful bow, which, you know, sometimes takes a little fussing with the ribbon to get a beautiful bow, but you know, go for one you like. If you can't get it beautiful, it's okay. And I took a giant glue dot that I have left over from a card kit, and that's where I'm going to attach my mittens and my, my uh, bow eventually. I added those glue dots to the back of the mitten and then a little bit of that red twine, and you can see there I just put the end onto that giant glue dot. And these are gonna stick really nicely to my front window panel and just look like they're a pair of mittens dangling there in the front. I think it's really darling. I did actually end up adding a little bit of diamond stickles to the cuff of these mittens for a little bit of added detail and I love how that turned out. So there's the topper for this snow globe card. Now this does, if you squeeze it, will fold flat and fit into a slimline envelope. If you have a lot of dimension on it, you probably wanna mail it in like a bubble mailer. So even though this card did not work out as a spinner and shaker card, it was kind of a happy accident because I wasn't able to spin it. I covered the back with that extra window sheet and then you can see the snowman from the back, like right here. And so I really like how that turned out and I'm really happy with this card. I think it's so fun as a shaker window card. And I will be back with part three of this video soon where I will be making a slimline snow globe shadow box card with this die set. So stay tuned for that. If you're interested in any of these products, they're linked for you below. If you enjoyed this video, let me know with a thumbs up. And if you're new here, feel free to subscribe. I have new videos for you all the time. I'll see you on the next one. Happy stamping. Bye.